Good morning, everybody. So I think it's 8 a.m. now. So may I start the topic for now? So today I'm going to talk about the electoral surgery, the marriage of medicine and physics and obligatory to a surgeon's implication. I think this topic, you everybody might have heard about it or the lecture so many times. So what's the difference? I think today this session, I would like to speak more on the principles of the physics and the involvement with the with the with the application first of all i'd like to to declare that i have no conflict of interest so actually to talk about this i have only the a lonely impulse of uh, of delight to talk about it and the reason i have to declare about this because i think most of the time when you talk about the electoral surgery, inevitably you have to talk about all the innovations or of the instruments from whatever the instrumental company. I think it's okay to talk about it. I think it's okay for you to have the preference because after all you are human, so you can have the preference to use whatever instruments you like. But in the end, I think it's good to know all the principles behind any instruments. And you just start from the basic instruments first. And as long as you can pick up with the principles of whatever instruments you like to use, I think it's okay for you. There are many ways to skin the cat. If you start with the basics and you know your instruments very well, especially with the pros and cons of every instruments, it's very good to know. So in the end, you will be able to use any instruments that you have because nothing is perfect and nobody is perfect. So everything has pros and cons. If you have your preference and you know it's very well, so shall it be. So today the content, I'd like to focus more on the principles of physics and electricity and the applications to the instruments. So the reason that I'm going to talk about the physics as well, because I think that it's the basics of everything. If you understand something, you remember it hopefully until the end of time. <laughs> and then you can adapt it to the safe practices and also to it can you can still use these principles to explain all the complications or all the modifications and to explain whatever things that you have to be careful or what's going to happen and if there there's some there's some time left i am going to talk about the innovations or the modern instruments and the leds as well but if there's no time left. I think I've talked about all the innovations or less many times already. But as I always emphasize that if you know the principles, you can always adapt to whatever instruments that you come in the future. So we, we will start with electricity 101. If I like to compare electricity, it's like water. And everybody always say so that water is because electricity is actually just the electron flows. So it will flow like water. And the voltage is the force or the push of the electron to go along the conductor. And so just like water, it will always run from the higher voltage to the lower voltage. It's like water that will always run from the higher place to the lower place. That's the first rule. And the second rule is that you must have a complete circuit for the electricity to run. And electricity always find the path back to the source. Always, whether it's the electrosurgical unit or the ground, or and it will always find the shortest path to complete the circuit and always find the path with the least resistance. So no matter what, in the end, it will find its own way, whether you realize about it or not. And this creates both pros and cons because it can also create the complications that you intend not for it to happen as well. And whenever the electron hits the resistance, it creates the heat. So if you compare electricity to the water, the voltage is like the pressure of the water and the currents or the amps is like size of the hose and the resistance is like all the sand or the slush that will block the flow of the electricity itself. So we, we, we will start with the Ohm's law. I think everybody has learned about it in high school or whatever. Why you have to talk about it? You don't have to remember it. But if you know the Ohm's law, you know that because 
uh, you you see that the flow of the electricity of, of the current will will be manipulated by the resistance so if you increase more resistance you can create higher voltage as well and if you in or either way if you increase the the amps or the currents you can also increase the voltage as well and it, the reason that i would like to talk about the voltage because um as you can see that when you when you increase the number at the electrosurgical unit you see all the whatever 30 4, 20 40 you know that that number is actually the power of the watts the watts is like the flow of, of the water that will eventually runs into the tissue or into the the patients so when you increase that power you will directly increase the voltage or the the force of the electric electron as well and you can either do it by increase the voltage or because so therefore because as i say in the previous slide because v the all the voltage will be increased if you increase the resi resistance so if you use electricity in the in the tissue with a higher resistance you, therefore you will have to increase the voltage and you have to increase the power or the energy at the esu as well that's that explains why when you use the electrosurgery surgery that you have to increase all the number at the esu itself so let's go back into history just a bit that some of you might hear about the name of the 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 old esu or electrosurgical unit we call it bovi because actually william bovi is the the and is the engineer at harvard he's the engineer at harvard university he's the one who created the esu and for in commercial use for the first time in the world and the, the first surgeon who used the ESU is uh, Dr. Harvey Kuching, who is a neurosurgeon. He used it since like 1926, so almost like 100 years ago. Unfortunately, in the end, William Bowie was a very, I mean, he's a very genius engineer, but he's a very bad businessman, so he ended up died poorly and the company was taken over by another german company and then in the end eventually taken over by covidian so the principle of okay when you like to manipulate the tissue or to stop the bleeding or to cut the tissue in the end you just would like to denature the protein itself because after all, tissue is just a protein, right? So you like to change the form of the protein, whether you like it to coagulate, whether you like it to evaporate, you just have to like to change the form of that protein or that tissue. So in order to do so, you can, you can do it with heat. Okay, when, when the first time I would like to understand electrosurgery itself, I didn't i did not quite get it myself until i watched the cooking show <laughs> i know that it sounds very really funny but it's true that in order to denature the protein you can use either heat it's like when you're frying an egg or you can use a mechanical force it's like when you're making a meringue you can create like a very high frequency vibration or mechanical force to just denature the protein itself but of course we are not be able to use salt denaturing like making cheese so two forms that we always use is a thermal denaturation or mechanical denaturation and if you want to be finicky about it it's like when you're making meringue of the italian meringue because you just use the pure mechanical force you're not using any heat at all which eventually you get there somehow but of course the the denaturing the mechanical force needs to be at a high frequency as well and the reason i'm talking about this process because later i'm going to talk about other other other, other mechanism that you you can use for surgery as well but it's not exactly electrosurgery electrosurgical device 
So when you're talking about electrosurgery, the principle of it is the, uh, it is the alternating current. Uh, I think you all know that we have two kinds of currents. One is the direct current and the other one is the alternating current. So for electrosurgery, you use alternating current and therefore the patient is included in the circuit. So the current or the electron actually enters the patient's body and the question is, if electron really enters the patient's body, why did the patient survive? I mean, that's, that's a simple question, right? Because I'm sure if you could you stick your finger into a, like electrical plug somewhere now, you, 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 you get electrocuted or whatever. Because we have the things called the Faraday effect. For the effect is that the, the fact that the mass, our muscle or nerve will be stimulated at the lower frequency at about 20 to 100 kilohertz, whereas if you increase the, to the frequency to the higher range, as in the electrosurgery, that is like 200 kilohertz to 3.3 megahertz, then you will not have this fertic effect. So your muscle and nerve will not be twitching so at the sole pur so the purpose of the ESU so or electrosurgical unit that it will change the alternating current, it will increase the frequency of the current to be above the Faraday effect and control the voltage and control the pulsating energy that will be released into one particular time and that's the three so there are th those are like three solemn tasks of the of the ESU itself so that's the main difference of the electrosurgery is that it must be an alternating current and the electron will actually transfer into the patient transfer into patient and it will be changed to the mechanical energy by the ionization or the or the, the flows of the electron and therefore it create because electron will hit the resistance that is the tissue and you create the heat in the tissue itself whereas if you're talking about electrocutory in the old days that is the direct current and the electron will hit the resistance at the metallic conductor and it will be changed into heat and heat will be applied to the tissue to get burned but the electron will not flow directly into the patient's body or into the patient's uh, tissue so that's the main difference of the electrocutory and electrosurgery unit so electrosurgery because of the fact that electron will be transferred into the patient's body therefore we can manipulate the, the, the energy more but unfortunately that can cause more complications or that can be a bit more complicated as well and the other thing that you got to remember is the the thermal effect of the heat so at first when i would like to understand this i did not quite get this concept as well as I said until I watched the cooking show in order for you to cook the steak if you want it to be well done or thoroughly cooked you have to give it a very slow heat slow constant heat whereas if you flash fry the the steak if you just like pan fry or flash fry the outside will be burned but inside you get the rare steak so it kind of like uh reverse my my old belief in the old days i thought that you want to cook it to be well done you have to get a higher it but it's wrong if you want to cook it thoroughly into the inside you have to get a low constant heat and then it's like the steak you have to finish in the oven to get the constant heat a lower thermal whatever but if you like to give the flash fry the outside will be burned but inside you will get the rare effect so it's the same thing if you want to cut if you want to get the vest the vessels to be sealed or to desiccate you have to give it like a slow constant heat but if you want to get something burn or carbonization or flash 
fry or whatever, you have to give a very high heat at the lower, shorter period of time. It's like boom. It's like a to create the bomb. So the thermal effect of the tissue, if you at 40 degrees Celsius, there will be no structural damage to the tissue. At 44 degrees, you get the tissue necrosis. At 50 degrees, you get the cell death in six minutes. Whereas if you give the lower heat, uh, around 60 to 95 degrees, you get the what's called the white coagulation or it's called desiccation is the effect that you get like a egg white, but like boy egg white, that is like the protein will be denatured and you get the white clump or white clot. So, and but if you give the heat to at a hundred degree, that is like the boiling point of the water. So if you give the, uh, if the, the heat is that high and you get the boiling, but in a very short period of time, you get the burst of the cells and therefore tissue will just, will be separated and you get the cutting effect. So in order to get the cutting effect, you have to give the, the, the heat at a very shorter period of time, but at a higher temperature. But if the temperature is too high, around 200 degrees, so you get the carbonization or charcoal or black coagulation. So I think this gives the concepts that if you like to get a coagulation or desiccation, you have to give the you have to get energy that is at a lower le level. Whereas if the the energy is too high or is higher, you get the cutting effect. And actually, this this picture also also explain why when you get the injury from electro electro surgery sometimes you you see the injury and the patient will have the symptoms within 7 to 14 days the patient might not have the complication that is like immediate complication like when you get the the visceral organ injury if you just cut or you get the direct con direct cut or ablation of the, the organ itself, you have the all those peritonitis within a few days after the injury. But if it is the electro, electro surgery itself, you might not see the effect or the patient might not experience peritonitis within a few days after the operation because when the patients experience, inevitably experience all those thermal injury, you never know what what type of temperature or what kind of how high the heat the patient will have or experience. If if the injury is the white coagulation, I don't think that you have the injury or do you have the the fistula or the peritonitis within a few days post operation because the white coagulation itself will be like a like I said it's an a boy and a boy egg is like an egg white. So it will be just coagulated at the wall, but after around like seven days, and it's the fact that the tissue will not grow back and that tissue will not be healed by itself. So therefore after like seven days, the tissue will be swollen because the inflammation and you get necro have tissue necrosis. That's why you have all those inflammation and peritonitis after like seven to 14 days. So post-operatively, even if the patients um, might not experience immediate complication after a few days post-operatively, you still have to recommend or advise the patients to observe her symptoms even like a few weeks after the operation. So this, this also explain the, the complications that might follow also as well. But of course, if the injury is the major injury or you have a slicer, bigger hole, whatever you see the effects more apparently immediately post-operatively. So now I'm, talk about, I'm talking about the mon those are the principles that I'd like to mention before. And actually it can still explain a lot of um, instruments as well. So after this, if you understand all the principles, it can pretty much explain everything that's gonna happen to the patients or to the unit. So for the monopolar surgery, 
it's most commonly used and but actually it has more it's, it's more complicated and it's there are, there are more applications than we originally thought the active electrode or the the electrode the electron will flow from the active electrode from the ele active electrode tip itself to the patient and we return to the, the return electrode that is attached to the patient's body and of course there's one rule that you got to remember is that like i say electricity is like water so when the horse or the diameter of the horse is smaller you get the higher pressure or higher voltage of the electron therefore if the tip of the active electron is smaller you have you create a higher density of the electron or the current then you get the higher effect higher voltage and higher energy of the of the at the tissue at that point but so you get the the localized localized rise in temperature at that tissue whereas at the return electrode itself the area is is bigger than the the active electrode therefore you won't have any theoretically if you apply it correctly you don't you won't have any burn at that return electrode so there are many variables that can impact the tissue effect of course the first one is the current density the smaller the electrode size, the higher density you get, and therefore you get the higher rise in temperature and you get create more burn or more, more thermal effect from that at that tissue. The second is the setting of the machine itself. You can manipulate two, two, two things. One is the waveform, that is the mode, whether it's the cut or calculation or the blend mode. Of course, the waveform is different. I'll show you later. And then, of course, you can also increase the power of the machine, as I say before. And of course, if you would like to increase the power of the machine, you directly increase the voltage as well, because it's the same thing, power is the voltage. And then you can also manipulate the electrode by increasing the distance from the tissue. I'll show you later about it. If you, of course, if you activate the the electrode at a longer period, you create more thermal effect or thermal burn. Uh, or if you and the speed of the of the manipulation manipulation of the electrode itself as well. If you drag it faster, you create less lateral burn. And of course, the tissue type, the tissue with higher resistance will create more heat. And in order to have higher resistance, you means that you, the tissue that is drier will have more resistance as well. I show later as well. And of course, S car, there's no water in S car at all, so it creates more resistance. The first one is the electrode size. So if you increase the size or the diameter of the electrode, you have you have the less thermal burn or lateral burn but if you decrease the size of the active electrode you have higher electron density and you create more tissue effect or more burn from it as i said that's why the needle the needle electrode will have more thermal burn comparing to the blade electrode or the the electrode with the higher uh, higher area and i cannot quite like like i cannot like how to i cannot emphasize enough how important it is to to check to always check your return pad because as i say if you have smaller area you have more, higher electron density therefore if your return pad is detached from the area of the body you can create this you can create serious burn to the patient and so ideally you have to put the return pad where there's the shortest distance from the surgical side so that in order that you you will shorten the the distance of the electron to travel in the patient's body so thoroughly safer to 
to decrease the, the distance of the electron to travel within the patient's body. And you should put it where the, the tissue is thickest and there's no bone because bone has no water, of course, it's simple fact. Therefore, bone has higher resistance and therefore tissue around the bone will have higher heat and you should put it at the well vascularized muscles because well vascularized muscles will have more blood vessels and blood blood is a very good conductor for electricity so in surgery you should put at the thigh of the patient and if the patients have any implants like total knee replacement and whatever you should put it at a, the the other side of the the limbs itself and you should use the patient return electrode monitoring system. Uh, I think in the old days, you see that the pad, we just one single pad like that. But in, in the newer unit, you see that there, there'll be two separate pads because if there is any detachment of one side, the, the system will, will have the, will, the, the system we have the monitoring system that there will be an alarm to 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 let you know that there's there's some there the there's a patch detachment and it, therefore it will be safer for the patients and as i say this this also shows also that if there's any patch detachment you you have smaller area for the pad to be attached to the patient and therefore electron density will be higher and it can create the burn it can create serious burn to the patient and this picture is a classical classic is a classical picture of the return pad complications every lecture about electron surgery there will be this image because it's like as I say, is the like historical picture. So you can have serious burn, as I say, this third degree burn from the return pad as well. Because I say the surface impedance can be affected by the excessive hair, the adhesive failure. Therefore, you should not reuse your return pad. And you should not put it where there's uh, any like bony prominence or irregular body contours, or if there's any fluid. Of course, if there's any fluid, you have the patch detachment as well. And adipose tissue, as I say, fat has no water. Therefore, fat is a very potent resistance and can create any heat within that as well. And of course, starch, scar tissue as well, because fibrous tissue has no water, has very less water. Therefore, that's a higher resistance at the scar tissue and can create higher heat in that tissue. So for the cut wave form, because you like, as I said, you like to to make the water in the tissue to be burst, like to just like abruptly burst to create the, the disruption of the cellular, of the cell, cell cellular intel of the tissue itself. So you have to give a higher, like higher voltage energy, like in a continuous fashion in order to raise the, the, the thermal effect to raise the temperature to, 100 degrees Celsius in the shortest amount of time to create the tissue division. There'll be little or no hemostasis at all and it create the tissue vaporization. So it'll be like 100% duty cycles. You create continuous waveform. So in order to achieve that particular amount of energy within the period of time, because it will be fine continuously, the voltage doesn't need to be that high if you see this voltage. Whereas if you compare to the coagulation waveform, you, you try to calculate the tissue, you try not to, to increase the, the temperature at the tissue to I at a shorter amount period of time. So it will not be fine continuously because it will there'll be some off period for the tissue to be cooled down to decrease the temperature of the tissue in order to get that desiccate effect or that coagulation effect. So, because anyway, you still have to achieve the, the, the fixed amount of energy. So the voltage that you have to give at the particular time must be higher comparing to the cut waveform. 
whereas the blend is like a combination of both. So uh, I think this one in this picture, you see, you, you understand more about it. So if you compare the cut waveform to the calculation waveform, cut waveform will be, will, the waveform is continuous, whereas the calculation waveform, the waveform is like, the, there'll be some on and off period, depends on the setting of the machine itself. But the voltage of the cut waveform is lower than coagulation wave coag waveform. That's that's one principle that's always there. Therefore, the for the coagulation waveform, you create more lateral burn because you, as you can see here, that your tissue will have more like a desiccation or the white white coagulation effect because uh, the, the temperature of the lateral tissue is lower comparing to when you use the cut mode to, in order to, to separate the tissue, to separate the tissue. And if, and now I'm gonna talk about electrode manipulation, as I say in the previous slide that we cut the, about the distance of the electrode from the tissue. If you activate the, the, the electron, at like a few seconds, just like a split second before you reach the tissue, then you, you can see that because you have to create a, the accumulation of the electron at the tip of the electrode. And then when you move the, the electrode to be quite near, just a split second before you reach the tissue, electron got to jump from the tip of the electrode to the tissue itself. And therefore, electron got to jump through the air. Air is considered resistance. That's why if you create the electrical, electrical jump like that, you create higher tissue effect. Because of course, uh, as I say before, that uh, whenever there's a resistance, there will be some, they create the heat. So when the electron jump from the tip of the electrode to the tissue, it will create more heat at the tissue comparing to when you touch the, when you comparing to the, 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 okay. If you, if you just create a jumping of the electron, you create higher, higher burn or higher temperature and it'll create the tissue cutting effect because of the uh, vaporization of the tissue. Whereas if you really touch, if you, really touch the electrode at the tissue itself, the, there'll be no distance from the tip of the electrode to the tissue. The electron won't, will not have to jump through the air. It just transfers smoothly from the tip of the electrode to the tissue itself. It won't have to travel through any resistance or the air that is like resistant. So it will create uh, less heat comparing to the electrical jump. That's why if you like to use the cut mode or you use, or whether you like to use the coagulation waveform to cut the tissue or to, to go through the tissue, you should activate the, the, the electrode just a split second before you reach the tissue. You are using the electricity to cut the tissue. You are not using the force to to cut the tissue, that's, that's the concept that we always misunderstand that. But whenever you did not, did not activate the electrode, just a split second before you touch the tissue, then you just touch the, the tissue and cause the coagulation. That's why it will not create the proper cutting effect as it should. As, uh, as Gordon M. Ramsey always say, Chef Gordon Ramsey always say that let the knife do the work. It's the same thing, let the electricity do the work. You are not using the force. You're not, you're not like watching Star Wars. You're not, you're not using the force to cut the tissue. You're using the electricity to cut the tissue. That's always the misconcept when you use the electro surgery.
I think there's some jinx when I'm talking about Gonorrhea Ramsey because now my slide just stopped. Okay, hold on. <laughs> okay. So this is a tissue, the tissue resistant. I'd like to show that, as I mentioned before, that the tissue with less water or that's like drier tissue with uh, less, less water, content, we have higher resistance. Therefore, all those adhesion or even the fat tissue, I mean, I mean, okay, naturally you feel that because fat is so moist and so soft, you should use the lower energy. Okay, that concept is wrong because fat, there's no, there's less water in fat. Fat is not water, fat won't go well with water. Therefore, fat is a very important resistance. If you like to use electrosurgery to any fat like a deposit tissue or mentum or, or whatever, you should use the higher voltage in order to cut through that tissue. Or if you like to use the electrosurgery to any tissue with a that is drier like a um, sheet or adhesion, you either have to use the, the, the higher voltage or you have to move your hand faster than when you use the the elect the electrode in the in the moisture tissue. Why? Because if you move your hand too slowly, you just cause the tissue to be dr to dry out, to just dry, and it will be sticky and it will be stuck to the your electrode. So you when when you get stuck, you use the force. You are not using the electricity. Means that you did not use your hand fast enough. You, you did not move your hand fast enough. So theoretically, if you like to cut through all those adipose tissue, you should use the blend mode. I know that it really sounds really weird, but it is really written like that in in Thilin, okay? So as I say that, for the vascular, highly vas vascularized tissue is easier to cut with a less resistant. Whereas if you go through all those fat or fibrous tissue, there, there are poor conductors. Therefore, you have to use the higher impedance or higher voltage or to just move your hand faster or so. The other one is that um, I like to talk is a alternate sideburn. Uh, it's very important to use the ESU that you know that is the ground isolation as well because in the old days and this is also another classic picture that everybody you talk about when you talking about electrosurgery, because in the old days you won't have the ground isolation circuit, so electricity will find the shortest way to create to complete the circuit and therefore it can just travel to all those all those like whatever is surgeon's hand, any metals that's touched to the patient. So it can create alternate sideburn as well. I think nowadays, most of the ESU will have all those like ground isolation system. But one thing that you should remember is that never use two ESU or two generators in one patient because it can still create an alternate sideburn because of the because even though you have all those monitoring circuit but if you use two machines then the circuits will be like the the circuits is not designed to 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 monitor with another circuit as well so it can be misinterpreted and therefore it can still create the alternate sideburn so whether you use what kind of energy, whether it's bipolar, monopolar, whatever, you should always use this only one generator or one ESU in one patient. So I, I think I have already mentioned about unipolar or monopolar elect electro surgeries. Where so the bipolar, the, the concept very simple is that active electrode and le return electrode is it's closer together, it's the same at the same at the surgical side, so you don't need any return path. And the electron will travel a very shorter distance in the patient's body, therefore, it should be safer to use bipolar. And because electron will travel at the shorter distance and there'll be less resistance from the 
patient's tissue, therefore most of the effect will be like coagulation effect because the electron won't have to jump. It won't have to travel through all those resistance. So it will create less thermal effect. So it create more like coagulation effect instead of the, the vaporization effect. But of course, in some ES, you can still have a cut more in the bipolar as well. Is how you manipulate the waveform of that particular machine. So let, let me just like uh, uh, emphasize on more, more on the basics procedures that you use. So first basic electrosurgical procedures that you always use is the cutting cutting of the tissue. Of course, you use cut waveform for the tissue evaporation. You can use the coagulation. Uh, there are a few types of coagulation that you use that you can get confused very easily. One is the fulgurating or the lining is, is, is the term that you use or the, the procedure that you use when you like create like a lighting effect or spraying of the electrode over the tissue to stop the heavy bleeding. So therefore, it will create like the arching or the spraying of the elect electricity at the surface of the tissue, but supposedly or theoretically, the, the thermal burn won't go too deep into the tissue. Whereas if you use the desiccation effect or the dry up effect, because you really touch the, the electrode to the patient's tissue, so it should coagulate those red cells, but to create, because you give a, you give a, lower heat gradually therefore it should create like a white calculation but of course the thermal spread will be deeper but of course you like to achieve that effect when you like to calculate the blood vessels so just remember those that when you like to use the fulgurating you like create the electron jump you just activate the electrode just a split second before you touch the tissues so therefore you create the electric electron to jump from the, your electrode to the air into the tissue and you create more more like a spraying effect or create spraying the the electron at the surface at a larger area but with a shallow at the shallow tissue effect whereas if you use the desiccation or dry up you just have to touch the electrode to the tissue in order to give slow slower gradually gradual lower heat comparing to the fulgurating in order to, to create a white coagulation to those tissue but the effect can be deeper as well and the ablation is the last one is like to give heat or calculate the large volume of tissue i think it's like ablation of the tumor whatever but we rarely use in in surgery in our surgery and of course, you can use the blend mode that is like cut plus coagulation. And the last one is the vessel sealing, with which mostly used with the advanced bipolar or bipolar technology to create a higher level of coagulation, supposed to give you like a higher level of confidence. So the cut mode, as I say, that you have to create the higher tissue, higher energy, just you should touch you should not touch the tissue itself to create the electron to jump and the discharge of the r2 and discharge of the r to be created electron to jump and create the higher thermal thermal burn to cause the average to cause the rapid vaporization of the tissue for the tissue to split whereas the foul grading you just have to use the use the dampen weight form for the for the tissue to to create like a to, for the tissue to have the off period to have the lower temperature whereas the desiccation as i say is supposed to use the electrode to touch the tissue in order for the to cause the white coagulation to give slower gradual thermal burn to reach the white coagulation and you get the deeper coagulation as well. Therefore, you get the better seal vessel. So I think this slide pretty much like 
summarize what I've been talking about the few slides previously. So if you'd like to get this slide, of course, no problem. You can get it from me later as well. It will just summarize everything that I've talked about. And this slide as well. So for the cutting to use the, you use the cutting effect for the tissue to get vaporization, you give the temperature to be higher than 100. You can achieve that by using the cut mode and activate the electrode when you almost touch the tissue and use the smaller, yeah, and you, you can either use the smaller electrode as well. Whereas for the coagulation, you can use the wider electrode to create a, a less, less uh, to create a lower temperature to cause the white coagulation. Whereas for the foul grading, you would like to get the black coagulation, you can raise the temperature to more than 200 to get the black coagulation. And the electrode should not touch the tissue to, cre to create that all those heat that you can get from the electrical jump through the air as well. Well, as if you like to get the dissipation like vascular ceiling, you can use with a mono, you can use bipolar as well, but you, or you can, if you don't have bipolar, you can still achieve this effect by using the monopolar as well, but you should use the cut mode because you like to give higher energy to the tissue to create better sealing, but you should not activate the electrode before you touch the tissue. You just you should just like use the forceps to touch those vessels, and then you just use the active electrode to touch the forceps and touch the tissue. Therefore, you give the gradual lower thermal effect to that tissue and to create better desiccation or vessel sealing. You can also use to cooling technique or water irrigation, which is quite a good technique to cool down the tissue. It will prevent the charring because the temperature will not be above 200 to create the carbonization. And it will improve the tissue conductivity as well because once you lower, you lower the tissue temperature, you get the better white desiccation or white coagulation or desiccation of the tissue. In laparoscopy, you can you can use this cooling technique by by atta by attaching the saline or water to the port as well. And now, I didn't talk about all those like principles already. There can be complications that can happen. I think I have talked about this complications of failure that can be can happen many times already. I just like to swiftly talk about, talk through it because once it's a insulation failure, it's quite straightforward once your insulator, as I say that when you have the smaller area, you have a higher density of the electron. So therefore this can be quite dangerous because electron will just travel to those smaller area and create a higher constraints concentration. So the thermal burn will be higher. So always check your insulator whenever you use the instrument. Second is the direct coupling is quite straightforward. Once you touch those conductor together, the electron can create and can travel and find the shortest way to reach to the tissue and therefore it can create a thermal burn. And the third one is the most, I think it's the most complicated one at, at it can, it can inadvertently happen more frequently than we hope. When a capacitance coupling, it will happen whenever you put the insulator between two conductors. It will always happen. For instance, in the first picture on the left, if you activate the electrode, the electrode tip will act as a conductor the insulator will be in between the your metal port and then your active electrode. Therefore, the the metal port can become can become the capacitor, but you the patient will not be injured by electricity. Why? Because the metal port there will be higher area, so electron 
can just travel from from the metal port to abdominal wall of the patients so it will just travel along and we have not the the density of the electron will not be high enough to create thermal burn of, at the at the abdominal wall or in the, in the picture in the middle if you use all plastic port because it's the non-conductor port so it won't cause any capacitor effect but if you use the com in the old days if you use the combination port of the metal and plastic port because electrical electro tip uh, uh, will will be in between the insulator so i think insulator will, uh, will be in the middle and then the metal port next to it will be will become the capacitor that and if you inevitably touch those to the visceral organ you create all those thermal burn as well i think those are like historical pictures because nowadays like i think nobody use the com combined port or the plastic plus metal port anymore you you either use the pure plastic port or the metal port but Actually, capacitance coupling can still happen. I think the most common example is the middle picture when you use a towel clip in the old days. And I did witness this effect with my own eyes before. In the old days, when you try to attach the the, the when you try to attach the cable of the electrode to the patients, whether it's open surgery or laparoscopic surgery, the your assistant or the nurse will just put the cord around the tower clip. Therefore, tower clip is the conductor, and then the cord inside is the conductor. Both both conductors are, are separated by the insulator, that is the insulator of the cord itself. Therefore, the tower clip can become the capacitor and if of course if you do this the towel clip itself can still cause cause thermal burn to the patients if there is any hole at your at, at the at the towel or at the patient if, if the towel clip touch the patient's tissue so so today i think it's very important to 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 tell or to be to ensure that you will not attach this cable in this picture like in this, this manner anymore. You should not put your cable around the towel clip at all. You just put it through the towel clip without any any with without any attachment like in this picture. Don't put around it. Or if the patient has any plate or uh, or implant, it can it can still act as the capacitor and create the alternate sideburn as well. So I think those slides I have shown I have shown in many lectures many times that the best surgical practices is to uh, use the cut wave form to for incising sealing or desiccation if you touch to the forceps because for the cut waveform you have the lower voltage and therefore it should create it should be safer and create less thermal burn or lateral burn and coag waveform should be used to just like superficially burn the all those small vessels of upgrading effect for the larger pedicles i would recommend bipolar is a bit better Use the shortest burst as possible. And then always check your insulator whenever you use the instrument. Whenever you're not in use, don't, don't put the electrode in whatever in the surgical field or near the patient's tissue because you can accidentally activate those electrodes and create the bur a thermal burn to the patients. When not in use, just put the electrode in the holster and don't touch any metal with, don't, don't, don't touch any uninsulated metal to the to the active electrode. I think this is more complicated in the laparoscopic surgery because in laparoscopic surgery your visualization is limited by the scope as well. Whereas in open surgery it can still happen, but you have to be even more careful in laparoscopic surgery. 
and should use the lowest voltage possible to get the desired effect. And this this one, the next one is also very important as well. I think it's uh, in the previous exam in the, in the laparoscopic exam last year, never activate the open circuit or open jaw of the instrument because you cause the electron to accumulate at the tip of the, the electro of the active electrode itself. Therefore, when you just put the active electrode near the tissue, you can create more thermal burn or lateral burn because of the electrical jump, because of the higher concentration of the electron at those active electrodes that to jump through the through the air and to the tissue. Therefore you create a much higher thermal burn than you expected. And always keep the whole active area in view especially laparoscopic surgery. Don't use any hybrid toka. I don't think anybody uses it anymore. And in the patients that you're not certain, like patients with the pacemaker or the implant, try to use bipolar when it's possible and use a generator with an REM system. I think, now, I think most generators now, they always have the REM system. And when you apply the return electrode, always make sure that it's the proper skin preparation, that it's not wet, that will be no fluid accumulation, and don't, don't put on any scar or hair ha area with, a, with hairy area or bony prominence. For the alternate sideburn, just make sure that your, your ESU has the proper grounding system and don't use too much power or increase the higher voltage. And this is also a very classic picture as well. When your machine is not working, the first thing that you always do is to increase the voltage and that is wrong because first thing you should set out the connection. And I can tell you right now that 90% of the instrumental frame failure is always the cables. So always have at least like two or three cables standby in your operating theater because it's always the cable is like all its connection. Check all of those connections or instruments before you increase the voltage. In pregnancy, you can use electrosurgery because you're supposed not to have the pyretic effect and because the fetus is both in the electrolyte electrolyte rich amniotic fluid therefore the electron should be dispersed and the fetus should be okay although there is no data available i think for the the innovation i just skip it for now because um i think you might not be, use it as frequently as the let so i just talk about let's now because just very short few slides is that for less you also use electrosurgery as well but the the effect can be manipulated by changing the mode or the coax or the cut mode because you manipulate the waveform in the same way as the previous slides that i show you and the power density or the voltage that you increase will create a different effect as well and also the speed of the incision as well if you move faster then you have less desiccation or less thermal burn effect and when you use less, as always say that you cut with electricity, not the force. So activating just a split second before you touch the tissue. Don't touch the metal speculum and cut with a minimal calculation. You, you always use the file grading, not desiccation. That's why I say you always activate just a split second before you touch. And then always blot out those blood of fluid. And you can use a slow irrigation as well with a non-electrolyte solution so that you can lower the tissue temperature and create less thermal burn. If you use the glove or insulator to put around your speculum, just make sure that there is no hole or no defect at those insulator because the, the effect can be catastrophe because if you have those small hole, then you create a higher elect electron density at those small area and therefore you can create even higher burn to the patient's tissue comparing to non-insulator technique. And I think for the take home message today is that um, electrosurgery is that uh, the current retravels in the tissue and when it's possible, just use the bipolar because it's shorter current path. For the safe practices, 
uh, I think the take no, the shortest like message is that just use the shortest activation and lowest voltage possible and always know your instruments whether what your preference instruments are at the end of the day you can use I think you should learn everything so when they if you don't have anything and you have nothing you can still do it and you you will not be manipulated by the lack of instruments or the lack of the shortest of the, the environments you can still do like do the best for the patients so thank you very much and i think that's all for the time for today you have any questions or comments you can still you can always ask me if you come across me in the future so thank you very much